Brilliant. Super. I'll start again. Thanks very much for coming along this morning for this uh, virtual leadership uh, uh, webinar. It will be an hour long and uh, there will be some hints and tips for you to take away. Uh, I guarantee that. So if you feel free to make, take some notes and uh, we are recording. So I will put the recording up onto my um, YouTube channel and uh, that's a good way of sharing out the links from there. So uh, if you're looking for that, the, the, the uh, link, please send me an email at the end. So we're going to talk sort of general, pro, um, generalized principles, if you like, for, to start with. And then as part of my gift, really, as a part of attending this the webinar is a free follow up session. Then that can be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour long uh, max. And that will be a, a little um, delve into into deeper areas of your business. So it will be more specific to you rather than the generalized principles that we're perhaps going to be talking about now. So you're more than welcome to um, to use that. That's part of our uh, action coaches at my abundance, if you like. So we're more than happy to share that time. So let's get moving. And so the overview, you probably would have seen this on the screen uh, um, on the um, on the presentation through uh, Eventbrite. So um, I, I won't really spend too much time on that. Let's get start struck straight into the presentation. So we are here and uh, it's probably we're virtual because of this pesky little fella, really, the, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, so now it's, you can take things in two ways, really. You can be doom and gloom about things or you can look on it on the positive side. So now is a great time to be a leader. And that's very much my, uh, my, uh, my mindset at the moment and the mindset I'm trying to drill into my clients. So uh, it does bring to mind a, a Billy Ocean song um from a, a few i think it's probably, probably from the 80s or 90s uh, when the going gets tough the tough get going and i've always loved that song and you think well yeah when the going gets tough it is time for the tough to get going so you can either disappear and uh, it'll be interesting to see businesses that haven't got a clear vision haven't got a clear passion of where they want to go they will decide to not go anywhere and uh, perhaps close or go off and do something else Whereas the businesses that have got that clear vision and clear leadership will definitely be going forward and pushing forward throughout uh, this uh, pan uh, pandemic that we're encountering at the moment. So let's uh, look on the, 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 the positives for sure. So the change curve is a great little um, tool really. So per certainly when, um, when the virus was first mentioned kind of, kind of way back in um, probably the early part of the year and it was in China and, uh, we all probably thought that it's not really going to come over to this country for sure. Um, but suddenly there's that shock and maybe a bit of denial creeps in. It's actually going to happen um, is it shouldn't be happening to us. And then probably the next things that uh, fall into place are really a bit of frustration and anger as to why it should be happening to us rather than the, the, uh, why, you know, why us, why me, why has it happened at, at now? And then that leads to perhaps a bit of depression for sure. Uh, and then hopefully that won't last too long and you can bounce back out of that depression, uh, accept the situation, focus on what you can do rather than what you can't do, and then look to pivot and change and start problem solving. So how can we do business? How can we uh, open our pubs, open our restaurants, open our schools, get back into business? And so we're very much in that problem solving stage at the moment. Um, so hopefully that, that uh, the change curve helps there. And uh, interestingly, this is a, a, a line and this is a great mindset uh, tool, really, that we use. Uh, it's a line of choice and you can decide where you want to be on that line. So are you below the line? So if, if you are below the line, you're making uh, excuses, you're blaming other people and you're perhaps living in denial, really, from that change curve. So it's very easy to make an excuse for, well, it's COVID-19, we can't do this, we can't do that. Um, and we'll blame, the, uh, blame the, the government, blame the economy, blame whatever. So that's very much the, 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 the negative side of things and below the line behavior. We're looking to be above that line. So we want to be uh, responsible. So as human beings, we are responsible for our own actions. We don't fly south when it gets... Uh, cold for the winter uh, we don't swim upstream for, as a salmon does to go back to its spawning ground so we are responsible for our, our, our own actions and we're accountable so we can uh, be held to account to put some numbers on things 
So then the, the top one there, the ownership really, that's where if you're spe specifically, if it's your business, you've got that ownership in the business. So, so that, that's something that you can't uh, delegate out to anyone, to anyone else of a team member, but you can take ownership of certain tasks and certain projects and uh, certainly be um, accountable and responsible and above the line. And tends to be the case really, uh, below the line are reasons why something's not happened. So there'll be reasons why something's not happened. As opposed to above the line is results. So things have actually happened and we've got things done. And that was very much a case of being with those power, powered up people, energetic people that are going to be um, giving you energy uh, rather than the other guys that the opposite uh, side of the spectrum are sucking the energy out of you and uh, 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 and taking away your energy and your positivity and uh, you're, 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 you're reducing your your own energy and uh, life spark if you like or vigor so I'd just like to ask a question then on the line of choice if you could grade yourself so we're now Wednesday morning um, over the sort of Monday, Tuesday, and the, the start of today, where do you, where would you put yourself if you had to score yourself out of 10, 10 being ownership right at the top and one being back down there living in denial at the bottom end of the uh, line of choice, where would you put yourself uh, on a scale of one to 10? Uh, and there, again, there are no right or wrong answers. You can just pop, pop your, if you could pop a number into the chat box, that would be great. Uh, so it's a, uh, on the on the uh, line of choice. Whereabouts have you been? And be, please be aware you can drop below that line, and uh, as long as you're aware of it, then you can go back above the line and uh, we get back to that positive thinking. So let's have a little look and see what's um, happened on the chat front. So yeah, two in there, brilliant. So we've got oh yeah, ten, eight, brilliant. Fat, Faith, is it? Have you got uh, a eight? Brilliant. So ten, eight, eight. Fantastic. Great scores. So brilliant. Be aware of that. Sounds that that's uh, excellent scores there. Eight, ten, eight, eight, ten. Brilliant. So be aware of what you can do. Let's move on to the next uh, next uh, rule. And we've got uh, twelve rules. I think it is. We're coming up really. So leadership uh, first and location second is our first uh, first rule really. And we've got, first and foremost, you've got to be looking at the leadership side of things. Things don't change. And I've got four little questions there for you. How do you know, so this is for you to ask yourselves, um, how do you know people are really working? So people are working from home, you're part of your team, they're working, working away from home or from another location, could be another office. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be their home. Um, just in general, they're not uh, operating where you are. So how do you know if people are uh, really working? Uh, question two there would be, are people getting enough social interaction? So that's an interesting thought. So our question three, are we getting good feedback when we need to consider options? And question four, can we be as effective as when we were co-located? So that really is when we were all in the same place. So can we still be as effective? So if we're, we're trying to answer those questions as we're going along and certainly give some hints and tips about how we can help with those questions. So let's move on to the rule number two. So Leading remotely requires you to do things slightly differently now. So certainly uh, for a leader, uh, there's two areas really, communication. So that's uh, certainly a, a key, key area in life in general, really. Communication is so, so key. And it'll be interesting to see how the communication tools have changed. So from for, from face-to-face uh, -face being in an office, certainly now they've changed to perhaps Zoom or Teams or... Um, uh, go to meeting or whatever or go to webinar there's lots of different uh, uh, tools out there is it by face um, facetiming people uh, on facebook 
Um, what, what is it that you're, lo you're looking to do? To, what communication tools are you using? And then the, the second part there is in the, the isolation. So usually some people, especially happens, perhaps if um, someone is promoted, um, I had a, an inquiry came, came in yesterday and uh, a guy is uh, looking, he was a salesman and he's now going to be the sales manager of a team. So he's going to be managing a team. So he will be moving from being one of the lads, if you like, to being a more isolated and being seen as the leader. So when you're off-site or virtual, that isolation is really physical as well as emotional. So that's a sort of double whammy, really, to be, be, uh, be aware of. So be careful and be mindful of that. Um, but the fact that the uh, active leadership's not changed, you still need to be uh, leading the team and uh, getting the, your team to follow you. Uh, it's just doing things in a slightly different way with a set of slightly different tools. So bear that in mind. So we're looking at our team and we're really looking at um, rem working remotely. It's definitely going to change the dynamics, really. And we need to be seen. And we put that in bold, really, there. So seen. So can you make more phone calls to, to your team? Can you make uh, send them more emails or prob probably um, not so much on, it, on the email front? Depends on the person, perhaps. But how are you seen? How are you visible um, metaphorically? So not necessarily on Zoom or uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, video conferencing platforms. How are you going to be seen and how is that communication changed? So we're losing that face to face. Um, I've just come on off of, of a webinar that I've been on. And uh, it's really interesting that I'm actually going out to see a uh, one of my clients this afternoon and I'm seeing him in, 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 in his office this afternoon. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because I'm um, aware that at the moment there's a lot of uh, talk on Zoom and uh, it'll be great to actually talk to someone and their lips are moving at the same time as the words are coming out. So they're in sync. So I'm really looking, look, looking forward to that and uh, getting those nonverbal clues. So that body language, so an awful lot of our communication is through body language and through tone. And if the, the uh, connection is quite crackly, on your broad brand, well, that tone is going to be lost. So we're losing that that face to face. So we do really need to pay attention uh, really, really closely when we're uh, um, com communicating online, uh, whether that's over the video or through phone. Um, and be being sure that your message is easily understood. So you can really clear your speaking clearly uh, and uh, not being too complicated in your message. And then find out other ways to receive clues that your audience uh, are, are on board, really, are, on, are listening. So use a chat box, or for instance, ask people to open up their uh, microphones to give some chat back. Uh, so have a look at those, those uh, clues, really, to ask for feedback. So we're looking at, um, we want to know what the people are thinking and not just doing. So again, we want to be seen and be seen. Uh, as the leader so i'll, I'll ask uh, a quick question now if you could pop uh, pop one, another question in the um chat box if you could on a scale of one to ten how visible do you think you're being at the moment uh, on that scale of one to ten uh ten being really high uh, one being low so that that's the the question is how visible so if i rang up uh, one of your uh, team members and asked them well hang on how visible are you how, what do you think they would say? What would you like them to say? Or what do you think they would say? So on a scale of one to 10, if you can pop that into the chat box, that'd be great. Okay. So we've got a nine, an eight. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, at the moment, yeah, I'd like, yeah, it'd be a night. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Super. So some good, um, good scores there, really, and like keeping that visibility. So if you you've put your um, scores in there, could you just jot down then what makes you give yourselves those high scores? So if you think of uh, one thing that you're doing that um, is getting you into those to, to keeping you um, seen by your team. So if you could perhaps jot uh, jot in uh, onto the onto the onto the chat box. 
uh, one thing, wh whatever it is, I'm just curious to, to find out, that'd be great. So how are you visible? could be through Zoom or through telephone, regular conversations. Just looking for a little bit of detail on the, what you're doing to be seen. Brilliant, yeah, regular tele, yeah, tele, uh, telecoms, uh, telephone calls, fantastic. Yeah, that's a great one. And when you say regular, how regular is regular? Is that once a day, once a week, a couple of times a day? Brilliant, not daily, once a week, perfect. So again, it depends on the business, isn't it really? And it depends on the person, what you're looking to do. Yeah, yeah, if it's again, it's, uh, if you're looking to ring someone on a daily basis and they're not that kind of person, uh, it's all about knowing who to ring and who not to. Um, they'll certainly get bored with that conversation. And uh, you, they'll feel like you're, um, you're pestering them, not, not the other way around. So Anna, what are you doing at the moment? What are you doing with your team and Sarah? I know Sarah, what would you be doing? What will give us a good tip? Just wait for those to come in and then we'll move on. Yeah, good regular conversations. Brilliant. And that's that it is good um, good to talk, isn't it, really? That's an old BT advert uh, from quite a, yeah, quite a while ago, really. That's showing my age. Brilliant. Yeah, we discussed daily. Brilliant. Yeah, many times a day. Through our internal chat, yeah, business quite a lot of communication, trying to replace the face-to-face -face discussion with our chat and phone conferences. Brilliant. So that's great. So on a daily basis there, the, the team are uh, working together. Super. Thanks very much for that. Appreciate the feedback. Good. Let's move on to the next, um, next point. So be aware of the impressions you make yeah, at all times. So again, uh, it's interesting isn't it, to say, well, what is the... Um, what is the attire for Zoom conferences? I, I've kind of um, joked with my clients, so I wear a, a collared T-shirt, like a polo shirt during the week. And then at the weekends, I wear a, a, just a normal plain T-shirt. Uh, uh, occasionally, I wear a, uh, a shirt to go out and see clients. I haven't been doing that very often. But be aware of what impression you make and what, what impression do you need to make. Uh, certainly, it's interesting. Some folk are still wearing... Um, jackets and shirts and uh, you think wow that's uh, do you really need to be doing that and this especially in this weather they must be um, must be in a very nice air-conditioned office that's all I can say or a room so how visible are you to your team and, and what are they seeing so just be aware of those things really now this is a, a famous sketch I'm not sure whether you'll um you'll, you'll be aware of it uh, but uh, this is a uh, the two Ronnies and uh, this slides in there really because my um my coach bet bet me that I wouldn't be able to include it into the um, into the presentation. It, it's generally it's generally known as the um, fork handles uh, sketch. Uh, so it's fork handles or four candles. So for those of you looking at um, some of the use of the English language, the two Ronnies were fantastic, uh, and they, the, the, the play on words was uh, yeah was really really clever amongst the, the two of them. Um, yep, so it's four candles. Brilliant, thanks, Sarah. So that in that we're looking at, they do mention. I'm uh, thinking about this. They do mention the free O's, and they did want Ronnie um, Court, uh, Barker, which is the bigger guy. He did it did want free O's, and uh, they wanted O's uh, or round O's in the in the end that Ronnie uh, little Ronnie Corbett had to get. So the three O's really are outcomes. So reaching a desired outcome for every meeting. So when you're having those meetings uh, with your team, make sure there's an outcome. What are you trying to achieve? And what are the action points that you're going to achieve? Or you're looking to measure against. Um, so it's outcomes. So you as a leader need to focus on others. Again, 
lead with engagement and inclusion. Now, interestingly, I can draw from my own experience. Um, my best boss ever was a really great guy and uh, he's one of my friends, really. I'd, I'd like to say he's my friend. He's actually one of my clients as well, but he's more of a friend than, a, than, uh, than anything else. Um, but he would always have been very, very inclusive. So whenever we looked at, uh, we used to be in the kitchen industry together and we'd always be thinking about what's our next kitchen, um, kitchen special offer. And uh, we'd always, do, uh, often we'd be driving around the country seeing our, our, um, uh, our kitchen customers, uh, our stores that we looked after. And he would always include me and say, well, what do you think, Steve, should be the next, present, uh, next promotion? I didn't always come up, to, come up with the right answer or that certainly uh, wasn't the thing that we always went with. But I, I always felt included. And uh, he always gave him good encouragement. So he'd always give a well done or thank you. Whereas compare that to my worst boss. And interestingly, I think I worked for my boss at the time, probably, I think it was about four or five years, but I recall him saying, well done once uh, in four or five years. So I was either doing a rubbish job, which he probably should have sacked me for in the first year, or he was a terrible manager. And I'd, uh, I'd like to think I was doing a reasonable job. So uh, I think it's probably the latter. So make sure you engage your team and, in, and give them that, that inclusion of, about what's happening. It's not necessarily about money. Uh, money is important, but that inclusion and engagement and thanks and praise does go an awful long way. And that won't be any different whether you're virtual or um, face to face. And then the other area there, really the other O or the third O is ourselves. So we want to make sure we evaluate our beliefs and assumptions. So what are we thinking? So address any trust issues. So interestingly, um, some of your team, they might not be doing the job that you think that they're doing, uh, but do you know that for sure? And is it something that you, it's a trust issue that you're looking at? Um, so who are they and how, how do you lead? It's important uh, wherever you are. So how, how, uh, so how you are really. So what is your belief? So it's in your mind, if you think it's true, so that goes back to the Henry Ford quote, if you think it's true, you're probably right. If you think it's wrong, you're definitely right. So yeah, that's definitely a, an assumption that, and belief that's in your head. So that's the three O's. So outcomes, others and ourselves. A great little tip for, um, for getting uh, meetings moving and getting things going is using, a, uh, it's called a LION technique really. So then an acronym LION. So it's, if you can just write down LION, L-O, sorry, L-I-O-N. And it works really, if you have a, depending on, um, <coughs> excuse me, so sip a drink a second. If you have a, a meeting, the, the, the L and the N do change a little bit. So if we're having a meeting all together on a Monday morning, you could say the L stands for last week. So what happened last week, team? What, uh, what happened? And then the I would be issues. So are there any issues that came up? And then the O is opportunities. So what opportunities uh, are there? So what opportunities for upselling? I work with a, uh, a gardener and um, so a lady with a gardening business, and she's uh, always getting her team to be looking to upsell and to just be aware, or do the fences need painting? Do the fences need changing? Is there any uh, extra works? Does, does they, do they need a compost bin? It's things that, that, that keeping an eye out for any opportunities to grow the business and increase the average order value there. And then the N at the end would be next week. So that does depend on when, whether you have uh, your meeting on a Monday or a Friday. So, so it could be if it's on a Friday, the, the L would be, well, yeah, last week, what do we do? And then on the Monday, if you're having that Monday meeting, the N would be this week and again it would change for uh, if you had the meeting on a Friday it would be the L would be this week what have we done and next week what are we going to be doing so hopefully that might give you some tips as to the agenda that with agenda if you think of a lion that will give you a great agenda to work from brilliant moving on uh, seek feedback and feedback is the breakfast of champions we're always being told that. 
So start with um, existing evidence that you've got for your team. So what files or paperwork or emails or notes that they've been looking at. Uh, identify the people you trust and develop trusted advisors. So build your um, support team around yourself. Yeah, op ask open and honest questions. So don't ask assumptive questions or presumptive questions. So things like uh, that you, uh, oh yeah, you are enjoying this meeting or you are doing this or you are doing that. Just say, how are you doing this? Or how are you looking to do this? So ask open-ended questions and be patient. So actually listen. So when you ask a question, be, li uh, be present. I think that's a great tip to be present and be patient. Don't try and rush in with a, a, an answer to everything. So have those co conversations, but allow for a bit of prep preparation. So don't just draw, uh, call up a meeting with people and not allow them to prepare if you want some detailed reports. If they can't rep prepare for those reports, that's not being fair to, to the, the team member that you're trying to work with. But people need to have some time to prepare for things. So on number seven, uh, rule seven, building trust uh, doesn't happen by accident, really. So we want to build that trust. And we're really looking at these three key areas. So have we got a common purpose? So do you and the team have the same purpose? Are we all heading in the same direction? And what is our competence? So what's the level of our competence? So how, how well do they do their job uh, in the team? And then the, the motives really, um, it's probably all about attitude. So are they willing to go the extra mile? So are your, are your people yes people that yes, we can do that. How can we get, you know, how can we do it rather than no people and making up excuses for why that, you know, some people have always got an excuse as to uh, why they can't do something. And they seem to have go to great extremes and lengths to uh, actually work out why they can't do that. So let's uh, just look, dwell on this for a second. So common purpose, so that's goals and setting things uh, for, for the future, future thinking. Do you and your team have the same purpose? So I'd like you to score yourself on a scale of one to 10 again. And again, Sarah, if you think about back to where you, you perhaps were and what if you could uh, give yourself a fair score. So on your co common purpose, does, did everyone in your team uh, know where you were heading at any given time. So whether that's for, for forever or for the next month or for the year or whenever, whatever time scale you'd like to put on. Uh, and I suppose to, to, to reiterate, a really great example was, um, it's often, often used, I, I love this phrase. Um, um, John, um, John F. Kennedy was uh, touring around the, the NASA Space uh, Center and uh, he spent a lot of time where the, in the command center and uh, the, where the astronauts were and all sorts of places. And then he came across a guy that was uh, sweeping the floor and he was sweeping up in um, a sort of corridor area. And uh, he asked this guy what, what he was doing. And the guy with the broom said, oh, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. And that was his uh, purpose. So he'd, he'd gone through the, the the culture dripped right through down to the, the the what would probably be the one of the lowest points in the organization to the janitor and he was actually or the cleaner and he got them say he was on the same page and on the same mission and when uh, apparently when uh, kennedy quizzed the guy he said well yeah what what you're, you're sweeping up aren't you he goes oh yeah for sure but uh, I'm keeping the, the, uh, these corridors clean and tidy. So if one of our astronauts comes down and he, doesn't, he slips on a banana skin, that's gonna affect our space program. And we won't, be, we, we won't be able to beat the Russians to get a man up into space and onto, onto the moon. So that's very much a, a real grand, grandiose uh, plan really of putting a man on the moon, but is that, that, that uh, common purpose? So hopefully that makes some um, sense. So if you could put in the, in the chat box um, on a scale of one to 10 again, do your team know where you're going as a business or as a department? So if you could pop that in, that'd be great. Super, so we've got a 
a nine, a 10 and a nine. Fantastic. Brilliant. Some great scores there. So that's common purpose. How about then on, so pick a member of your team. And again, I'm not going to know, I don't really know, want to know any of the, the names involved. So it's all uh, uh, certainly confidential on, on the competence front. So that you've got two, two, uh, two um, scales, if you like. So how good are people at their job? So can they do their job? And it's your job as a leader and manager to get that person up to the level that they their job description determines. So that's your job. If they want to get promoted and go further, that's their job. That's a different side of things. But in actual competence, competence, think of someone, just have someone in mind, and then I want to ask the same question for that uh, diff sorry, different question to the same to the same person you've got in mind. So how competent are they? So how good are they at their job on a scale of one to 10? And then what's their attitude like? Their motives, are they willing to go the extra mile? So again, you should have two numbers for the same person. So that person is Steve. And uh, on a scale of one to 10, we're gonna say he's eight, could be better, not bad. And then his attitude is uh, seven, Ooh, could be better. So let's see what you've, um, Let's have a little look and see what you've popped into the chat box. So keep it as the same person. Again, we're not we're not need we don't need to know name any names. Uh, okay, so we've got all right, brilliant. So from Sarah, a six and a five. Hmm, interesting. Uh, so six and five, eight and six. Fahit, Fahit, is that right? Fahit, have you got a score there? If you can think of someone. Brilliant, six and a seven. Okay, cool. So another question then for you is, is it easier to get the the attitude so the second number that you popped in would that be easier to increase that number to get that to nearer to a 10 or would it be easier to increase the, the competence number so that's a kind of um what do you what are your thoughts is it easier to get someone to be better at their job or have a better attitude curious to know your thoughts on that Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I like that. Attitude first, although not easy. Yeah, the attitude, um, we always uh, uh, encourage our clients to hire on attitude. So you can hire on attitude. If people have got that right attitude, that can do attitude, that really, really outweighs any competence. So if people are good and can do the job, so if you do the if you can do the job really really well, you're perhaps a, say if you're a nine or an eight nine or a ten, but if your attitude was terrible, you'd be wasted. It's just really frustrating. So you we're really looking at ideally we want uh, good people with fantastic attitudes, but certainly if you uh, if you ask me to choose, I'd choose attitude over um, competence all day long. Because I believe, you know, firmly believe we can train anyone to do anything, uh, certainly to a reasonably high standard. Um, that's for sure. So brilliant. Thanks for that. Let's move on. So that's uh, building trust and competence. Uh, point number eight. So we're looking at um, setting goals. So we did mention that common purpose. So we want to set some goals. So we want to have organizational uh, outcomes and team outcomes and personal or individual outcomes. So they're the things that were the three sort of areas there we are looking at. So organization, uh, the team outcomes. So the organization is the business. Where's the business heading? 
the team. So it's like if it's a big business, it'll be split into different teams. And then it comes down again into that lower uh, lower area. So you've got more personal and individual goals for, to, to build up into that team, to build up into the organization. Um, I'm sure you probably have, uh, would have heard of SMART goals. Um, we like to call them uh, SMARTY goals. So I put the IME on there. So we've got SMART goals is specific, measurable, achievable, results orientated and time bound. But then we put the I and E, e on really. So it needs to be interesting and exciting. If things are interesting, mildly interesting or mildly exciting, they won't get it won't get moving really. So we want to be looking at those smart goals uh, or smarty goals rather. And goals should be. And um, I really, Penny didn't really drop drop on me on this for a little for quite a little while uh, until sorry until quite recently. Um, goals should be something that include a stretch. So they're, they're not something that you should be able to do straight away. So if they are, that would just be on your, a to-do list, on your to-do list. And um, I probably, I do a little bit of running, uh, not a massive amount. Um, and for me, a goal, if I set a goal of running 5K, that's not really a goal because I can already do that. That's more of a to-do list. But if I set a goal of running a marathon, well, that's certainly a goal. That's certainly something I need to work up to. Um, that's something I can't do. You know, I wouldn't be able to go out and do, do a marathon this afternoon That's for, or this evening. That's for sure. But I could, if I wanted to, do a 5K run. So it's all relative, really. So work out that that goal needs to have a, a, a big element of, or an element of stretch there. So it's not something that's a, on a, going onto a to-do list. So have it, make sure that you've got to, um, in your your work role there the quantity so how many so how many so it could be if you're in a call center how many calls are you going to make uh, we were interviewing a, a lady um, a couple of weeks back and she was doing 200 calls a day and we thought wow that's uh, that's really impressive uh, 100 a day is probably is a great figure but to do 200 um I'm not sure about the quality but uh, interesting the quantity was there so against the time factor so how many, how long did that, did that person do that, those calls over? That'd certainly be say for, for in, in that case, it was 200 calls over a day. And then how is the quality? So the quality would be, well, did it get any appointments or did it get any sales or did it get any follow-up? So what was the next step that people were looking at? So make sure that you're setting goals uh, in the workplace that are both qual quality, quantity, quality, and there's a time element involved as well. Uh, and that will give you a great, uh, great set of goals really for your team. Uh, next point, number 10. So maximize the tech or you'll minimize your effectiveness. Again, uh, certainly now people are um, coming on to much more familiar with the Zoom and webinars and that on, on board. And certainly in the early days, the tech was a um, bit, bit shaky really and people were uh, are always uh, uh, asking, I think it just sort of carries on, doesn't it? Hello, hello, can you hear me? I think that's gonna be a sort of COVID phrase really. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you see me? And uh, that's probably um, people not uh, not in having any confidence in the technology that they've got uh, at, uh, at work. So use the technology at your disposal. So whether it's the getting the right tool for the right job, so video, recorded messages, File, common file locations so people can share things on Google documents, for instance, uh, emails, webcams, video chats, you can actually see things and do some demos, texting, phone calls, conference calls, whatever tool it is, but certainly uh, in the IT world, the people that are uh, uh, up, uh, up, up, up on board and uh, tech savvy are certainly gonna be much more effective than the people that were, were non. And I, I, I probably draw my, uh, from my family, uh, my mother-in-law has just got a new iPhone. Uh, her iPhone is actually better than my, my iPhone. She's got an iPhone and an iPad, uh, and they've got Sky and Virgin on there to the TVs at home. And yet my mum, bless her, she's just got a home phone number, home phone line from BT and a, a normal old fashioned TV that doesn't get Sky or doesn't get any other TV channels. So the difference is really stark. So the sort of fruit, uh, fruitfulness of um, one's life compared to another is, a, is an amazing difference. 
So uh, my mum, bless her, we have to ring her and go and see her. Uh, whereas uh, my mother-in-law, we can uh, ring her and video chat and webcam and do all sorts really. So uh, it does make a, make such a difference really. So maximize your use of technology. And coming to the, the tail end of the presentation now. So examine your beliefs and your self-talk. So what are you telling yourself when no one else is listening? So your beliefs define how you lead people. So if you believe that someone's doing a good job, you will probably act accordingly. Uh, if you believe that someone's not doing a good job, you'll be uh, acting in a very different way and uh, that, that um, will come across to them for sure. Um, so good leaders require a healthy self-image. Yeah, you need to have a healthy self-image of yourself. So just be aware of, um, watch out for things about the, you're saying bad things about yourself. It's not gonna be any um, of any benefit for sure. And look for checking that sort of self-taught monster really, if you like, check your assumptions, and accept positive feedback as valid. So if people think it's true, then it's true. Uh, and don't feel, be afraid to get help from others. That's always a, a great tip. And then tip number 12, accept that you can't do it all. So I think that's the thing of, de of delegation in management and leadership. Um, find a balance between being responsible to your organization, but actually taking care of yourself. You all hear of these people that have a massive burnout there. Um, uh, it's almost seen as a, a as a, um, rite of passage or a, a hero to be working. Oh yeah, I've been working since six o'clock in the morning and I'll be carrying on working through to 10 o'clock at night. Well, uh, big deal really, because that sort of thing you can do, but it's, you're not gonna be looking after yourself and you can't do that forever. It will be at the detriment of other areas of your life. So I, I know people talk about a, 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 a work-life balance. Uh, I, I met a lady and uh, she said, well, yeah, actually I, I like to say it's a blend. And I, I really like that phrase. So it's a blend. So there will be times when you do need to work really hard, like uh, certain deadlines come in and you probably do need to, to crack on and get your work done. But there'll also be other times when you when you don't and when you need to be um, you can relax a bit and have some family time or friend time or you time. So just be aware of that. Get that balance. So look again at your organization's flow and pro, uh, flow charts and processes and workflow. The systems and uh, processes really help you with your time management. Uh, so it allows you then to, to have the system, have the process, train your team to do that, follow that, those systems and processes. And the great thing is then if anything's going wrong, it will be down to the process and system rather than the person. So you're much more likely to get engagement if you can say, okay, well, it seems that's something's gone wrong. It seems like the process has failed rather than the, uh, the person. So we're not, uh, we're not criticizing the person as an individual. We're actually criticizing the process or we're looking for ways to improve that process and workflow. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, identify areas where the team could handle your activities. So again, what can you look to delegate to your team? And it means delegate, not abdicate. So if you're delegating something, you're clear that they know and they are, are, are able and, uh, and willing to, to carry on that, carry out that duty. So say delegate effectively. Um, if you're not, you probably end up doing this. So you'll be the um, business owner in this scenario here. Um, and uh, everyone else is kind of busy watching you doing all the work which is kind of not what you're uh, paying these people to be doing, really. And I quite like the um, health and safety guy there leaning on his um, shovel. That's quite a, a nice one there. So the business owner there. Brilliant. So to finish up, I'm going to put, I'll come out of the, um, the, the presentation screen, but have a little look at your notes. And are there, so have a little list of perhaps two, three, four, five, six things that you might need to take action on today or the next couple of days. So make a little list of uh, three to six things, and then we'll, uh, we'll um, perhaps share one that you might need to look at in more detail. So I'll just stop the, um, stop the screen. No problem, Sarah, that's okay. I'll pop, stop the machine now.
Okay. Hi, Anna. Hi, thank you for this. It was amazing. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Have you got a list of a few things there that you can share? We don't need to say because we're on the recording. So um, if it's confidential, um, <laughs> yeah, oh, we go, oh, yeah, they, but, yeah. So um, I tell you what, I'll stop the recording now. So thanks very much for coming along. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you again.